Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to get this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for a whole new world next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Aladdin from the movie Aladdin. We've already built the genie, but now we've got a method to actually make use of a genie because Wizards of the Coast granted my wish and made a genie warlock. My next two wishes viable throne weapon fighting and an archaeologist artificer subclass. Oh, I should have wished for infinite wishes. Rookie mistake. You're such a wonderful crowd. We'd like to play a little tune for you. And I'd like to dedicate it to a young man who doesn't think he's seen anything good today. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be a street rat, running around town, up walls, and out of harm's way from the city guard. Next, we need a friend, unlike any friend we've ever had, with magical powers to help us lie to the girl we have a crush on, even though he thinks you should tell the truth. Finally, wishes. Those are pretty important. Let's get three of them. For stats, we'll be using the standard pointer right from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and charisma high. Dexterity will be number one. You've got to be faster than everyone chasing you because there are so many people chasing you. Charisma next, you're the Jean Valjean of Agraba. You're great at stealing bread and singing about how sorry you are about stealing the bread. Strength after that, you're pretty great at climbing and jumping with all that athletic stuff. Follow that up with constitution, you're just a regular dude who gets beat up by an elemental naga, that's pretty intense. Intelligence is a bit low, you don't actually understand the rules of magic and wishing until they're explained to you, we'll dump wisdom though. You're not great at figuring out what the right thing to do is, or who is working in your favor. Aladdin is a human, variant humans get feats, and the mobile feat makes you faster on your feats. Your movement speed increases by 10 feet, you can ignore difficult terrain while dashing, and creatures you've tried attacking can't make opportunity attacks attacks against you until the end of your next turn. Disengaging for free is pretty great, especially with some stuff we're getting later. Bump your dexterity and your charisma with your two free points, take performance for your skill of choice, and the urchin background for sleight of hand and stealth. Urchin works, but you could also call it riffraff, street rat, but I don't know. I don't buy that. We'll kick things off as a rogue, letting you grab four skills from the rogue list like acrobatics, athletics, investigation, and perception to help you move through a wondrous cave and find magical trinkets. You get expertise in two skills of your choice, which will double your proficiency bonus with those skills sleight of hand will help you get out of locks and acrobatics will help you break grapples so i'd go for those you also get sneak attack letting you add a d6 of extra damage when you have advantage on an attack roll or an ally within five feet of the person you're attacking i'd imagine it's easier to cut someone when there's a monkey on their back like a literal monkey not an idiom Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. With your extra movement speed and the ability to stop people from taking opportunity attacks, you can just dash and get 80 feet away after you try to hit someone. That's pretty great. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype. Thief rogues get second story work, letting you climb walls without it spending any extra movement, making you a real pain in the butt to catch. You also have fast hands, letting you pick locks or use objects with a bonus action, letting you rub that lamp behind your back. You also get 2d6 sneak attack damage, but what about that lamp though? Though. Well, if we dip over to Warlock, we can use our charisma to sign up with someone even more charismatic than us, the Genie Warlock. You get a Genie's Vessel, which lets you do a couple of different things. Bottled Respite lets you jump inside the lamp, holding out for a number of hours equal to double your proficiency bonus. Genie's Apartment is well decorated, with cushions and tables for you to just relax. Since the vessel is a tiny object, if you're hidden while using it, you can essentially disappear from combat. It's not like any of the bad guys are going to think you went inside a little lamp. You can also use the Genie's Wrath, letting you add Add damage to one attack per round equal to your proficiency bonus. That damage type is determined by what type of genie you signed up with. We'll call genie a Ginny since he's light blue and flies around real fast. It doesn't really matter though. We're not taking any of these special elemental spells you can get anyway, but that will make the extra damage thunder. Instead of grabbing elemental spells, we'll grab spells like Prestidigitation, which lets you do a bunch of close-up magic tricks, cool down beverages and warm them up, play a little backing music, stuff like that. True Strike lets you remind your audience that you should never try and trick or mislead someone you're romantically interested in. If they don't want to date the real you, you shouldn't want to date them anyway. But the True Strike spell gives you advantage on an attack roll next round. It can be useful to get your sneak attack off if you really have no other way to do it, but otherwise just try attacking twice. For your first level spells, Charm Person charms a humanoid for an hour that fails a wisdom saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. This isn't mind control, so Genie can't make someone fall in love with you with it. It just makes people friendly towards you and gives you advantage on charisma checks with them. Illusory Script lets you make some writing that looks like other writing to someone else, unless they can make an investigation check against your spell save to determine whether or not you are a real bona fide prince. I know it's bona fide. I pronounced it wrong on purpose. 
Second level warlocks get invocations, little bonuses from genie to make you cooler than the other suitors. Beguiling influence gives you persuasion and deception proficiency, which pairs well with a charming of persons to help you get away with your cons. Armor of shadows just makes you a little harder to hit, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. You're not even wearing a shirt the majority of the time. The Middle East is heckin' hot. Who wants to wear plate mail in a dry 110 degree heat? That's a uh, in Fahrenheit for my non-American fans. I'm not saying it's literally boiling outside. For this level spell, Unseen Servant creates a formless servant that nobody can see, but it can run errands for you for up to an hour, no concentration required. A whole parade is gonna require some extra help. I guess I'm just assuming that. I've never put together a parade. Third level warlocks get a gift from their patron, and since you're such a good swashbuckler, let's grab a pack to the blade to conjure weapon as an action, and it's magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Jafar has some scaly exterior as a snake. It could be nice to have something a little sharper. You can also learn second level spells. Suggestion lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have to do something you suggest for them that's not harmful and sounds reasonable for eight hours. Hey, we're putting on a parade. It's gonna be sweet. Go get some peacocks. Should take quite a bit of time. But you could also use it for something useful rather than just keeping a guard occupied. Fourth level warlocks get another ability score improvement. Bump the charisma and strength for better jumping and friendship with your genie. For this level spell, invisibility will let you turn invisible for up to an hour depending on your concentration, but ends early if you cast another spell or make an attack. But it could be really great to help you steal what you can't afford, which is everything. Fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Thirsting Blade lets you attack twice with your packed weapon as an action, letting you swing that scimitar with plenty of speed. Keep in mind, you can only pop sneak attack once per round, but most of your damage is going to be coming from a good dexterity modifier here. Even though currently at level eight, it's still only pretty good. You can also learn third level spells. Genie warlocks can create food and water, which instantly creates 45 pounds of food and 30 gallons of water, making your parade a catered affair. The food is bland, but I feel like that's generally the case when you make 45 pounds of food in six seconds. Gordon Ramsay would not approve. Sixth level genie warlocks get an elemental gift, giving you resistance to thunder damage since genie is a genie, and you can give yourself 30 feet of flying speed as a bonus action for 10 minutes, an amount of times per day equal to three times your proficiency bonus. It's pretty much just a standard flying speed with a magical carpet. It isn't necessarily on a carpet, but that's some pretty harmless flavor. I'd allow it. For this level spell, Major Image creates a 20-foot illusion, complete with sights, smells, sounds, and temperatures for 10 minutes that you can move around with your action. An investigation check against your spell DC will prove that it's an illusion, so it's a bit risky to use one of your very sparse spell slots on, even if it can pay off huge when used creatively. Seventh level warlocks learn fourth level spells. Dimension Door lets your genie throw you and a buddy 500 feet away as an action, helping you and Jasmine get away while Jafar is none the visor. Wiser, I misspoke. But that's a solid pun. I'm leaving it in. You can also grab another invocation, Trickster's Escape, lets you cast Freedom of Movement once per long rest without a spell slot. This means that your movement can't be reduced and you can ignore difficult terrain. You can also break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement to make sure you never stay in jail for too long. Eight level warlocks get another ability score improvement, lets invest in charisma for better illusions and charmery. For this level spell, greater invisibility from the genie list will make you fully invisible for a minute, no matter what you do, as long as you hold your concentration. That's gotta be great for thieving. Ninth level warlocks get another invocation, otherworldly leap lets you cast a jump on yourself at will, letting you triple your jump distance for a minute. Why take this when you can fly? Because Aladdin can jump really well. If you want a power build, grab something else. I won't judge you. It's just less Aladdin. You can also learn fifth level spells. Creation from the warlock list creates an object that exists for an amount of time depending on what it's made out of. If it's made of plants, it lasts for 24 hours. Stones last 12 hours. Metals last an hour. Gems last 10 minutes. And adamantine or mithril lasts a minute. It's the perfect golden calf bait and switch type deal. Tenth level genie warlocks gets sanctuary vessel letting you bring up to five creatures into the vessel with you at the same time anyone who hangs out there for 10 minutes gets the benefits of a short rest including you warlock spells recover on short rests is the fight not going well use your insane movement speed to get jasmine raja the carpet and napu away from the fray hide out for 10 minutes then come back with all of your spell slots and full hp this is bonkers good and i love it for this level spell scrying lets you spy on someone you're familiar with the more familiar you are with them the harder it's going to be for them to make a wisdom saving throw to not be spied on less for 10 minutes and if they can see invisibility they'll see your little genie spy as a light the size of a fist watching them kind of creepy, but maybe use it on the bad guys instead of your would-be partner. 11th level warlocks get a 6th level mystic arcanum spell, which is basically a spell you can cast once per long rest instead of on a short rest like the rest of your warlock spells. Mass suggestion is like suggestion for up to 12 creatures. It lasts for 24 hours and doesn't require your concentration. This is how you get a parade together, provided everyone fails the wisdom saving throw, of course. 
12th level warlocks get another invocation mask of many faces lets you cast disguise self at will changing your appearance and even your clothing if you want some princely duds for your ability score improvement at this level keep that dexterity on par with the charisma that's really where your damage is coming from and sometimes you just gotta slash the evil sorcerer bamboozlery isn't always the right option 13th level warlocks get a 7th level arcanum spell plane shift brings you and up to eight friends to another plane or banishes someone after you land a melee spell attack and they fail a saving throw you could send Jafar back into the lamp, or you could go on a wacky adventure like you did in the animated series. Really, whatever you want Genie to do. 14th level Genie Warlocks get Limited Wish, letting you get the effects of a spell of 6th level or lower that takes an action to cast, and no material components. Literally any spell that takes an action. Fireball, Revivify, Bones of the Earth, Elemental Weapon, Find Greater Seed, Haste, Weird Stuff from any list, it's all yours. Of course, you can only use this once every 1d4 long rest, but it's effectively giving you more spell versatility than any other caster. 5th level Warlocks get another 8th level Arcanum slot. Glibness means the lowest you can roll on a Charisma check is a 15, then you get to add your modifiers. So for Performance, Persuasion, and Deception, that means the lowest option is 25. Also, any magic that would determine you're lying will think you're telling the truth. Honesty is the best policy, but what if it wasn't? But if you just lied a lot, that'd be pretty cool. You also get one last invocation. Shroud of Shadows makes it so that you can cast Invisibility at will, basically meaning anytime you need to get away, you will. 16th level Warlocks get an Ability Score Improvement, and since Glibness will already make your Charisma skills work for a full hour, let's just go with Dexterity, capping that off to get the most out of your fancy sword. Our capstone is the 17th level of Warlock for one 9th level Arcanum spell, and only Genie Warlocks can learn Wish, which lets you do anything. Anything you want. If you wish for anything other than the effect of a spell of 8th level or lower, it's gonna mess you up. Every spell you cast is gonna deal 1d10 necrotic damage per spell level to you until you take a short rest. Your strength drops to three for two d4 days though you can remove a day by just relaxing also there's a 33 percent chance you're never going to be able to cast this spell again obviously that's because you've only got three wishes until you free genie hopefully your genie is as nice as robin williams some of them can be real jerks now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first wish is the best spell in the game because you can do literally anything with it you're also very mobile with a flying speed extra speed for mobile cutting action freedom of movement and jump all pairing together to get you one jump ahead of the breadline. Finally, you've got so many ways to bamboozle your would-be pursuers with charming and illusions to keep them baffled. For weaknesses, you don't really deal that much damage with your packed weapon being your best option. When Eldritch Blast was just sitting there waiting for you to scoop it up, just grab it. I'm not going to tell anybody. You're also pretty low on health, around 120, meaning that maybe you should wish for a better constitution stat. Finally, while wish is awesome, the penalty is rough, and never being able to cast it again could mean that you can't do anything with your ninth level slot, which is kind of supposed to be your best move every day. And that's why you wish for infinite wishes. I'm sure your DM would love that. If they don't, they could monkey spaw you, bully you, and totally ruin the life of your character and the party. But it's not easy getting out of poverty. High risk gives high rewards. Hopefully you get lucky, otherwise you might not get very Jafar. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making a new video every day this month. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and subscribe to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.